It's because it's science. So that's why we care. Because it's on the exam, also a good reason to care. But what, why is it important to life, right? We're talking about the chemistry, and we're talking about the chemistry of life and how, how this, these things make us possible, right? I mean, what is it about polarity? So we talked about bonding last day, right? For those of you that are here, I think with most of you, if not all of you, right? We talked about uh, covalent and ionic bonding. And then now we're looking at polarity. What, what is polarity all about? Does anybody have a definition of polarity? When the side is slightly charged. Say that again. When the side. When one and one side is slightly charged. Slightly charged. Yeah. Okay. So a molecule or one and one. I like the chair. We all do. <laughs> different charge than the other. How does this happen? What causes this to happen? The number of electrons <laughs> are It has a what? Electronegative. More electronegative. Yeah, that's it, right? So one in the element, which one is that? Yeah, the, who are those guys? The non-metals, yeah, the non-metals. One element, the non-metals. Is it okay if I just put that for electronegativity? Yeah. There was one uploaded to Moodle. Isn't there? Yeah. Uh, not what you mean? Isn't it too much for a semester exam? Yeah, I know everything in this semester, don't you? That's a good idea. No! I'm not crazy, it's to me that it's crazy. I was planning on just having it for the semester. But classes like that, like things build on top of everything else, you know? So, like, probably some of the vocabulary you were using at the beginning, you're still using now. You're just using it in a slightly different way. No. That was the first part of the second semester. First semester was all about uh, evolution. We talk about the different parts. Remember, we talked about mitosis, mitosis. Correct. That was all first semester. Yeah. Yeah. Just about this semester. The, the final exam. Yeah. You know that schedule that I sent everybody about these review sessions, all those topics. That's what's on the final exam. Yeah. Everything since you've been here at the school. <laughs> So basically the whole year for you. <laughs> right? So polarity, we've got one end of the molecule has a slightly different charge than the other, right? And why does that happen is that one element tends to, um, to have a, a higher electronegativity. So it pulls electrons towards them. So if we're looking at this example here, which one is going to be the metal and which one is going to be the non-metal and why? Non-metal. Isn't it when we isn't it only covalent No, electronegativity is something that the atoms have. All elements have electronegativity. And then that causes them to interact with each other. So, what is this one? Metal. metal. This one's the metal, okay? 
And the other guy? Non-metal. So non-metal. And why do you say that? Because it has higher electronegativity. Yeah. The non-metal tends to have a higher electronegativity, so it's pulling electrons slightly towards it. Right? And when it does that, it becomes a little bit more negative than it was. It's not fully negative, right? So if we're talking about um, if we're talking about the the ionic and the covalent bonds like we did last day, right? We're not talking about ionic bonding, we're talking about two sort of shades of covalent bonding. Right? So we can have polar covalent bonding or what's the other part? Non polar. Yeah, right. So that's what we're sort of having a look at. Polar covalent bonds, and we can also have non-polar covalent bonds. Right. Um, what's happening here specifically? This is kind of the same idea as this, right? What when we we're talking about covalent bonding, so we're talking about what with the electrons? Sharing. We're talking about sharing of electrons, but they're sharing. Oh. Unequally sharing. Unequally, yeah. Polar covalent bonds have unequal sharing. You meant non polar. Yeah, right. Yeah, so these guys are equal okay. sharing. Unequal sharing of electrons. So we got unequal sharing of electrons, we got equal sharing of electrons. So give us an example of one, either one, whichever one you pick the one, give us an example of two elements that will bond either with equal sharing or unequal sharing. Hydrogen and oxygen, what type of bonding is this? Polar or non-polar? Polar. Polar. This one is polar, right? So this guy in here, we would have oxygen bonding onto hydrogen. In which direction does, are the electrons being pulled? Towards oxygen. Towards oxygen, right? So this guy is going to end up taking on a little bit whoop, come on, of a negative charge, and this guy is going to end up with a positive charge. And what were the other examples of elements that tended to pull electrons towards them? Hydrogen to nitrogen. Wait, say that again? Nitrogen. Nitrogen, yeah. Oxygen and nitrogen. Okay. So nitrogen was the other guy. So this guy and that guy. And what about down here? What were the ones that we tended to talk about here? Carbon and hydrogen. Yeah, carbon and hydrogen. It tended to be the two that we had going on. So if you had bonding between this guy and this guy, what type of bond was it? It was nonpolar. If you have bonding between oxygen and nitrogen, it was nonpolar because they're of equal strength, right? Or roughly equal for us. If we had bonding between carbon and hydrogen, actually, I shouldn't have drawn them that way, should I? Let's take a pure. Sorry if you've already copied that down. Bye bye bye. Yeah. How do we have it going? We had. Um, Oxygen and nitrogen. Right, and then we have carbon and hydrogen. Which direction are electrons being pulled? Yeah. Up or down? Okay. Up like I mean between these guys now. So they're equal here and they're equal here, so I've given you these little two-headed arrows. Okay. And then what about up or down? Okay. They're going up, right? So carbon is losing that way or that way, and these guys are losing that way. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good diagram for you or not, but it doesn't want to work very well. Right, so those are for us basically the, the, the four different or the four different elements in the scenarios that exist between them. Right? As far as living things are concerned, remember we talked about Chon and then who else? We had two other elements that were in there as well. Do you remember what they were? Like the elements that are just make up the vast majority of living things. Chomps, chomps, yeah, chomps, 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 chomps. yeah, CHO, N, which is what we have here, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then phosphorus and sodium. What's EN? E EN, sorry, you came in, like, anybody remember what that one was? Electronegativity, right? If you're not going to remember that, don't write EN down in your notes, right? If you're taking notes, write it out, electronegativity, and then maybe just put it in brackets. So you can go back and have a look at it. So we get rid of the 
trading chairs, you guys still want to sell them for? One T. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Right? So, what else are we looking at for polarity, for covalent bonding? What are some of the things that it, that it um, makes happen? So, we've sort of got the idea of what these bonds are, what they happen between, but what are some of the causes of polar bonding? Like, what does polar, polar, what does polarity make happen? Make, say again? Amino acids. Makes amino acids what? Okay, it makes, uh, not the chains, folding. but, folding. yeah, it makes the folding and everything going on, right? So can I, can I clear this and give us some more space? Yes. Okay, is anybody still taking anything down? No. no. Yeah. We'll try to, I won't clear it, I'll just make a new one here. And then I'll, I can put those up for you after. I'm, I'm sorry, just for those of you that are, I don't think I emailed this to you yesterday, uh, but I'm trying to set up another, um, folder on the uh, another book on the uh, Moodle page that has all these review sessions and stuff in there. So I'll just take these things and I'll just post them oh. up so you can have a look. So you don't have to like, you don't, don't necessarily copy down exactly what you see here. Copy down stuff that it makes you think about and helps you understand. And I'll post these up for you so you can see them. Right? So we said there an example of when uh, when is polarity important. When is polarity important? We talked about amino acids and proteins. Uh, Right, so we'll talk about the amino acids and how they bind together and all that sort of stuff again, but generally speak, like we'll talk about that in one of the upcoming sessions, I think next session actually. Um, but what happens with, what, what is the, like, the basic structure of an amino acid? Does anybody remember what that was? Uh, C, C, H, H, N, H, Which way do you want me to go? Start here? Yeah. C? C, and then C, to H. Which way up, down, left, right? Left, no, right, 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 right. And then another H there. Here? Yeah. You can't stick another H there. H can only have one bond. Oh. Where do you want to end? Then C, C. Isn't it C, N, C, C? C, C? Yeah. N, C, 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 C. And then on the left, on the left, N. And then from the end, there's H H, like one H, yeah. And then from the C, there's like the chain R, the the different part, and then bottom H. And then C, double bonded, so O H, and then the others O H. There we go. And it doesn't matter, right? You can flip this around, you can spin it around, you can twist it however you want, as long as those elements are bonded to each other. It doesn't matter. Right? So you can draw them. Whichever way you want. Um, so yeah, so here's generally speaking what we've got going on. And when we talk about polarity, it's these guys here that we're looking at, right? Different R groups have different polarities, right? Or, or they have the not they are polar or nonpolar. And if things are polar, then they can take on either positive charges or negative charges, slight positive or slight negative. Right? Or they're going to be nonpolar. When they when they pull together, yeah. then it's hydrogen bonding, yeah. And that hydrogen bonding is driven by the polarity of the molecules, right? Or of the chain. So these R groups, right, have different polarities. <coughs> that mean? Or we just say, whoa, whoa, if they have different polarities, then what is that going to make happen? They can fold. Why? What's going to cause the, the, like the, the amino acid chain to start folding up? 
because opposite forces opposite are charges. Attracted. Yeah, opposite charges are going to start pulling together, right? So if they have different polarities, right? Opposites will attract. So when we have those different charge sort of side chains, we call them, right? Remember we said this was called the base chain, then this was called the side chain, it was up here, right? When those side chains had different charges, they started attracting towards each other, right? And pulling them in and causing the whole molecule to twist and fold and take on this three-dimensional shape. Yeah. What else did we see, Colbert? Big one. Big, 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 big. Everywhere, all around us, all the time. Not that that's not all around us all the time either. Water. Water. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. How'd you go? What was that called? Oh, it's so funny. It has like, stronger attractions. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah, what were the two? Talk about two different things. Right? Adhesion. Cohesion and adhesion. Water molecules interact, uh, result in. Cohesion and adhesion. What was cohesion? Water and water. Water to water, yeah. What was adhesion? Water to something else. Yeah, water. Do other. Right? And why was this important? And we talk about the chemistry of life. Why does this matter? They need, yeah, water to crawl up the xylem. They need water to get to the top of the tree, right? I mean, water is necessary. Photosynthesis, which was part of first semester. Are we okay? Yeah. We get the cover on there. Right? We talk about photosynthesis in the first semester, which will not be on the final exam. Right? But knowing that plants need water for photosynthesis is sort of a basic thing. In the sense that photosynthesis taking place in the leaves, the water's coming from the ground, right? Plants gotta have a way to get that all the way upstairs, okay, up to the up to the top shelf. So they don't have pumps, they don't have a generator, they don't have a little motor that's driving water up to the top. So they rely on these two processes right here. And because those tubes, remember, are so, so what? So yeah, so narrow, right, Morning. Because those tubes were so narrow, it maximized the surface area that was in contact, the water was in contact with the tube, right? And that helped to draw the, draw the water up using adhesion up the walls and then the cohesions we're pulling each of the water molecules up behind them, right, so that everything was getting where it needed to be. Right. Um, what else is going on with water? Not just about cohesion and adhesion, but what else does the polarity of water enable it to do? Hydrophobic. Okay, so it makes things hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So it allows things to dissolve in the water or not dissolve in the water, right? So things either dissolve or not dissolve based on this. Running low on space again. up 75 or 80% of our body. Convenient? Coincidence? 
convenient, definitely. Coincidence, no. I mean, if our bodies were made up of something else, water, you guys ever heard what they call water? I don't know if I even mentioned this one to you before. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Some of you said <coughs> universal solvent. Yeah, they call water the universal solvent, right? It dissolves so many different things, right? So many different things can dissolve inside of water which means all the different parts of our body, right? We looked at those macromolecules, we talk about carbohydrates, we talk about amino acids, right? We talk about proteins, we talk about lipids, which don't really dissolve in water as well. But nucleic acids, all of those things, for the most part, dissolve in water. And it's why our bodies are made out of water. If our bodies were made out of something else, right, then proteins wouldn't dissolve in them as well, right? Nucleic acids wouldn't dissolve in them as well. So your body would be constantly trying to spit out DNA which probably wouldn't be all that functional for you, right? Or at least DNA would not have become the, the genetic material. Something else would have had to be, right? But because there's so much water on our planet, that's what life has evolved sort of based on, right? And it's important in the fact that it can dissolve so much stuff. So our bodies stay together. They're not constantly trying to separate, right? Like if you put a mixture of oil and water together, those things are just always trying to separate themselves. Your body's pretty happy the way that it is. It's not It's not trying to like, whoa, get certain parts out to different other parts out. That would be weird. What else are we missing? Anything else and any other examples that we talked about? We really got a minute here. Well, mercury for adhesion. Sorry? Mercury for adhesion. Mercury for adhesion. Mercury for adhesion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a small sort of example, right? different things don't bond or don't have the same polarity as water, right? So we looked at water. Remember, what was the example that Julie's talking about when I gave you that picture of mercury? Was it, and there was a picture of water in a tube. There was a picture of mercury in a tube. It can what? Yeah, sort of. Remember, so when we took, when we put water in a tube, remember it formed a meniscus, a U-shaped meniscus, because the water was attracted to the sides of the tubes. Right? But mercury is more attracted to itself. So rather than being pulled towards the tube, it pulled towards itself and it made that inverse meniscus inside the tube. Right? So different things sort of interact with different molecules. And uh, anyways, there, I'll post these up. I'm not sure, was that more video? Maybe we can get that again. I'll see if I can get these things posted up for you. Um,